everybody today for attending those repeated chalice on this day, Palm Sunday in the year 2022. Now we begin Holy Week. Holy Week begins with Palm Sunday, which is today, and extends through until Easter morning. The concept that overshadows the season of Easter is the idea of resurrection. And we'll talk more about resurrection next Saturday when we meet on the full moon and celebrate the liturgy of the chalice Eucharist on the full moon of Easter, which is historically and anciently when you would honor the resurrection of Mar Yeshua. Today, for the divine teaching, we're going to talk about a verse from the Gospel of Thomas. I have it in my phone here. I'm reading from the Gospel of Thomas, Logian 8. It says, The bar Anash is like a wise fisherman who cast his net into the sea and pulled it up full of small fish. Among them, he found one good large fish. That wise fisherman threw all the small fish back down into the sea without regret, but chose to keep the large fish. Whoever can understand my mashal, let him apply it to his own life. I'll read that one more time. <clears throat> Gospel of Thomas, Logian 8. The Baranash is like a wise fisherman who cast his net into the sea and pulled it up full of small fish. Among them, he found one good large fish. That wise fisherman threw all the small fish back down into the sea without regret, but chose to keep the large fish. Whoever can understand my mashal, let him apply it to his own life. This is the dollar for the prophetic utterance of Mar Yeshua, a historical Jesus. So what does this mean? In the, in the verse, originally the word for bar anash that we spoke was ha anash. And ha, ha anash means humanity. It means man, but not man singular. It means humanity. As in the Adam Kadma, this second Adam that St. Paul spoke of, and this second Adam, this archetype of a purified humanity that has existed since the beginning of time, the teachings of Marius who are meant to purify us and to make us worthy of being in communion with this new humanity, this conscious, compassionate, pure love, giving, <laughs> tolerant, <laughs> new humanity. And this new humanity is on the earth, and it's also something beyond in the higher olamim. The higher olamim, there are ten olams, olamim, or spheres or heavens. And at the highest one in the ten olamim is the throne of God, where the baranash is at his right hand side. So when Jesus spoke of the Son of Man, he wasn't speaking of Son of Man plural. He was speaking of son of mankind, that each of us are becoming a son or a daughter or a regenerated being within this new communion of great souls, zonics, saints, spiritual masters, if you will. And this happens here in this life, but it also extends beyond into the spheres beyond us. So there are, there's the first and second Olamim, which is the day and the night sky. Right above the day and the night sky is the third Olam. 
And in the third along exists both Gehenna and the partings. So Gehenna became the Christian hell, but hell never existed for Jesus, something that was made up along the way for whatever reason. But Jesus did teach Gehenna, and Gehenna is very important to understand because it was the burning ground for trash outside of Jerusalem. It purified things, it got rid of the trash, it got rid of the smelly stuff, the icky stuff, and left only a pure space behind. Fire transforms. So Gehenna was a place of purification, and it's where Christians got the idea of purgatory along the way. Uh, but Gehenna was a place not of eternal damnation or eternal punishment. It was a place where we reflect on the not so good things we did, the things that were selfish, the things that hurt other beings, that hurt ourselves perhaps. So Gehenna, for most beings, would only last several days, maybe several weeks for the average human being to go through this purification status. Even the worst human being possibly imagined would only be in Gehenna for up to one human year, according to pre Kabbalistic thought that Jesus was familiar with. So the worst person would not be in hell forever. They might be in Gehenna and have to be purified for up to a year. Jesus said that his disciples would not see death. There will be some of you, some of those among you, who will see the coming of the mountains, the sovereignty of God, and not and not one of you will see death. So, see death means experience Gehenna, the suffering and trials within Gehenna. If somebody has seen the Malchus, they have also become a Baranach. They become one with this corporate Messiah, and they're anointed. With this communion of saints that sit to God's right hand. And they, together with God, evolve all of creation, according to Yeshua's original historic teaching. So, a Sadiq does not need to go through Gehenna. They can go to parties and even higher, to where the great beings, the great Sadiqs, and the great saints live and where they help with the evolution of all of creation. So that is what resurrection really was. Resurrection was never meant to be a second coming Davidic Messiah Christ. Jesus made fun of or satirized the Davidic Christ in Mark. So he didn't believe in that. But he did believe in the Son of Mankind Messiah. The Danielic Babylonian idea of Messiah, which is the regeneration of one human being soul by soul in this large communion of saints, large communion of spiritual masters or enlightened beings, if you will. And those beings were meant to bless and guide all of creation and to help grow the Malkuth, to help grow the body of the Baranash, the true body of Christ the anointed corporate Messiah. But it became twisted over time. When one transcends his lower nature or her lower nature and consistently acts from a higher level of compassion and pure love and the divine type of teachings that Jesus taught, then he becomes eligible to become a Baranash, to become one with this corporate son of mankind Messiah this second Adam, this regenerated body of saints. And that conscious union with the Baranach is what real resurrection was. And the, the Aramaic Hebrew word was kima. Kima means a standing one, one who stands, one who is awake is what it means. So one who is awake in the Olams, in, in parties in the higher, in the higher Bolomi. So the true idea of resurrection is to wake up. Kima. Let's really reflect on this word this holy week. 
Kima means one that is standing up, one that is awake, that is spiritually awake, and is one with the one corporate body of the Baranash. This pure archetype since the beginning of time. And it's it slowly spreads. That's why the Malkuth is so slow. It's been growing since Jesus announced it so long ago. But it's still growing today because the Malkuth can only grow when each soul becomes a barrage or becomes part of the barrage. Whenever each saint has the rulership or the guidance of God within their heart, soul by soul, this planet becomes more and more filled with Malkuth. And then when we leave our bodies, when you become Baranash here on Earth, after we leave these bodies, it's not necessary to come back down. Reincarnation was definitely a part of early Christian thought. It was called Gilgal. Gilgal means to reincarnate. So what would happen for one that wasn't fully pure, they couldn't become part of the corporate Baranash. They'd have to be reborn to purify themselves. To lift themselves up, to awaken themselves, like in the idea of Buddha, the awakened one, it's the same concept, same idea. So until you're fully purified or purified sufficiently, you can't join the corporate Varnash in the Olami, the higher Olami. So what would happen is that you would come into Gehenna, and for a few days after death, you'd be purified in Gehenna. And then for the average human soul, they go to parties, the Garden of Eden, and rest, sleep, until the appropriate time came to descend into a new human body and to have a new opportunity to serve humanity, uh, develop pure love, pure consciousness, and all the spiritual qualities that Maria Shua and other spiritual masters of the great world religions have taught. So Kima means to stand up in the Olamim as an awakened body, saint. And you all, at that point, you retain that saintly consciousness forever. If you're just a regular being, you will dissolve the current personality you have. And you'll have a new personality when you experience reincarnation. But when you become a Varanash, when you become a great Sadiq or a righteous one, you maintain that individuality in the higher Olami. And you use that purified personality to help with the evolution, the spiritual evolution of this world and all of us. So that is the meaning of Kima, resurrection, to rise from this state of being to a spiritualized state of being in the higher Olami where we have a portion of God's sovereignty, where we are given assignments by the divine spirit to do things that makes the world and the universe a better place. That is what true chemo was, what true resurrection was. And we'll talk more about it next slide.